Let's do it. Yeah, hey, ladies and gentlemen. We're back. What up? What up? We are back. We are back. Why, episode, right? Episode six, brother. I know, bro. Mate, I think the more that we so, uh, look to extend and we keep going week by week, it's more of a trip out every time, isn't it? It is, eh? It's ridiculous. How are you going? Bro, good, man. Good. Lockdown right? hasn't, lockdown hasn't uh, destroyed me mentally yet. That's good. Um, but yeah, all right. How about you? Yeah, look, not bad. Um, obviously, like I always talk about every week, hating every minute of it. Um, yeah, yeah. I kind of want to just kick this off uh, just on a bit of a serious note. Uh, if you give me the platform for a couple of minutes. Now, we always talk about how we don't want to talk about the lockdown. Mm. And we talk about how we don't want to talk about COVID. We don't want to talk about these things. Unfortunately, here we are. We'll be back again talking about it. But the reason we're talking about it is because it's having an effect on a lot of people. Um, you look at social media over the last week or so, or even the last three or four days, and you see a lot of people who are, you know, can't run their business because they're not considered an essential service. Yeah. You no. Know? And for them, they can't really put food on the table to provide for their families. Um, and that's one thing that's really stuck with me the last week. Um, it's something that I hate seeing. And look, people have their opinions on, you know, the whole vaccination and, and everything. I'm not here to jump into all the conspiracy theories like I've been doing the last couple of weeks. But I just want to let everyone know, for me personally, that I want to help out in any way I can. Um the reason of I want to kind of do is we have the platform to do it, right? So I thought I want to just have my voice heard um, is there are so many people who are doing it really tough. You know, I'm thankful. I thank God that I still get to work from home. So I'm pretty blessed in that regard. But my heart breaks for those that can't even go to work or they're not considered an essential service. Um, and I want to just be out here to let you know, like to reach out, you know, if there's anyone that wants to have a chat, um, whether you know me well, uh, whether you don't know me too well, um, this is just for everyone that I'm here to chat to anyone if they ever need anything. Um, even I'm, I'm even going to the extent of if people want financial support, um, I like to do my part and give when I can. Um, I know this time isn't easy for everyone. And I know that we are not in a good space as a country with all these lockdowns and all these forced rules and everything, which is driving a lot of people insane. Um, but this is my call to kind of reach out. So I'm here to help. I'm available to chat at any given time. Um, please feel free. If you want to reach out to me personally or privately, if you want to reach out to uh, the Instagram page or the Facebook page privately, you can do that as well. But if you want to reach out to me personally, no problem. Um, I've seen these statuses around. Um, it's like a generic status. It's been copied and pasted around Facebook. You know, if one place to sleep or that, I can't offer that. So I don't want to put up a generic post and, and say I, I can offer things that I can't, but I'm, I want to be able to let anyone know that if everyone and wants to have a chat, uh, wants to talk, not that I'm a professional, but I'm here to be a lending hand if I can. So if it's financially, if it's just someone to talk to, I just wanted to let you know I'm available uh, for anyone, whether I've known you, whether I don't know you, if you want to talk, I'm here because we need to get through this together and it's ridiculous how things have panned out so far. Um, but I just want to kind of reach out and, and help when I can. No, nah, no, bro straight out uh, i appreciate that as your mate and um, i know a lot of people listening to this will appreciate that as well i echo your sentiments 100 percent, guys do not under underestimate how much this can affect you mentally mm. and underestimate the um effect it can have on those around you your mates um i mean we're all feeling it yeah. um don't forget that you know there's people you can talk to there's me there's stat there's mm. your family members your pastor your church leaders whatever it is guys make sure you're talking to someone if you need it even if you yeah. don't think you need it if you just need to talk to someone and just have a chat do it especially in a time like this we're praying for you all yeah. and i echo everything you're saying stato if you guys need anything please don't uh, hesitate to reach out yeah. and um that's why we do this stat we mm. do this to have a laugh but to get people's minds off it to show people that you know we're hanging out we're talking um especially in a lockdown situation. You know, I heard, I had someone say to me this week, oh man, stat really rips into you after last week's episode. I go, yeah, but that's the fun of it. Mm. We're here to hang out. We're here to have a laugh. And, and that's what it's about. You know what I mean? And, and yeah, guys, exactly what stat said. If you need anything, give us, give us a call. I appreciate you taking that time stat. That's, that's good stuff. No, well, good. I think as well, just before we continue, um, I actually tried to do my part in a sense and try to call some of my mates. Um, Ray, I called you on Saturday um, mm -hmm. and I speak to you every day, 
but yeah, I thought, which, you know which, what? Was like, which was like, I was like, what's he calling me for? I'm pretty sure we have a podcast where we talk for an hour at least. Yeah. So I wanted, and then I, I started saying, listen, it's don't get used to this. part. <laughs> We're going to start this a little different. How are you going? But it was just because, you know, everyone is regardless of whether we'd like to admit it or not, we're all yeah. impacted by it somehow. Um, so we're just trying to reach out. I'm trying to reach out to everyone as best as I can. Yeah. Um, and yeah, the platform's here. So if you guys want to reach out, you can, but I thought I'd just kick it off that way. Um, and just give a couple of minutes just for that. And then, you know, we're all, but we, like, I know me, I can do my part. And as Ray just said there as well, if, anyway, we can help, please uh, reach out. Don't hesitate to, I feel like you can't reach out. Well, so you know where I'm at with all that, bro. I'm a big advocate for um, yeah. mental health and things like that. Yeah, um, sure. yeah guys, don't underestimate it. And um, hmm. always remember, it's going to sound like a cliche, but it's not. We're here for you and God is there for you, man. You need, yeah. you need anything. Trust me. Trust hmm. me. It sounds like a cliche. Get on your knees and pray. Yeah. For sure. How is lockdown treating you, man? speaking yeah. of it yeah you know what like it's it's up and down you know what i mean yeah like it's it's for me bro like i think you can say as well we've had very busy schedules yeah. you know every night is has been something on whether it's church related or personal related or it's podcast related it's always been something doing to go from a regular schedule to absolutely nothing is driving me through the roof i'm with you you know I, i'll go to be fair i'll go for drives every day yeah um I'm real. I'll, I'll go for drives every day to clean my head just to get out, to get out of the four walls of my house. Mm. Um, but bro, thank God. You know what? In in a in a time like this, I really compared to a lot of other people's situations, I really am not, I'm not complaining, bro. I think that's the main thing, bro, is remembering that God's in control of this. Yeah, of course. And, uh, it's so easy to complain, especially when the eleven o'clock hits every day, trying to see what Gladys is about to say next. <laughs> Try to um, ignore that. But we just need to remember that no matter what decision is made, it's God's decision. He's made the decision, he's in control. Exactly. I guess that's what gets us through it, bro. Other than that, what are you gonna do? You know? Yeah, for sure, bro. You can, see the, you can see the insult could complain, bro, but that's you know what? We gotta we just gotta do it, bro. We gotta bother. Listen, I, I think take advantage of this time, man. You know, read your Bible, get into mm. prayer, do all that sort of stuff, catch up on yeah. some Netflix. For sure. You know? Because once we get out of here, everyone's gonna start complaining again. You just want me to watch movies, don't you? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> all right, and let's let's get into that for a second, you cheating dog. Oh, hey, 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 hey. You're a cheat. What are you talking about? You're a cheat. You're a scumbag. This Why? Guy, ladies and gents, I, I want you to know very clearly, when we put up the poll this week to see whether or not Stat would be, um, you know, watching a movie every two weeks, he manipulated some things. He voted himself, which was fine. Absolutely great. But then once I saw the final results, it was 6-5. So we won. And then Stat goes and puts up a, a status well, saying, uh, unfortunately, you know, we didn't get the numbers. You're a liar. Listen, listen. All I have to say is that the numbers don't lie. Nah, I you, won. You're a liar. I won. Um, and look, I'd like to thank everyone that voted. Appreciate you did not it. Win. You did not win. Listen, listen. At the end of the day, listen, you can sit here and it. you can... Listen, hey, yeah, the people want it. But the numbers don't lie, mate. And listen, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you movies that I know you will like. Okay? So I'm not going to torture you. I'm not going to go and make you watch Casablanca or, you know, all the black and white stuff. I'm going to give you movies that exactly. you're going to love. Okay. Do you know, I tried the other day yeah. watching Madagascar. And yeah, I that was rough, rough bro. Minutes. Honestly, that, I, I watched it too mm -hmm. um, recently. I didn't realize how much that movie doesn't hold up. Mate, 40 minutes in, I, got, I can't believe it lasted 40 minutes. Madagascar. And everyone yeah, talks seriously. about what a movie and it's so good. I can't do 40 minutes. I lost my mind. When, when did you watch it? Madagascar? I watched it last night, bro. Oh, there you go. I couldn't do it because we were yeah, talking just... about that a couple of days back. I couldn't do it. Hey, it was it was not as good as I remember it being, and that upset me. Yeah, I tried like forty minutes. I got no chance, no chance. Really, you gave up forty minutes in? Yeah, listen, it was a fair attempt. I wasn't listening for about thirty eight minutes of it, so I was I was um I had the footy on the side as well. So I was trying to watch the footy and, and try to give a bit of attention to it. Well, and again, you know what? I can't even. Okay, that's your problem. You're trying to do seven things at once. Yeah, you know what? It, it, that's it. Madagascar ruined it for me. I couldn't do it. Well, either way, we're still gonna get stats. Take we're gonna do the segment because you're a cheat. Nah, look, mate. Okay. Again, you can't lie on that. No, you can't cheat like that, bro. This is probably one of the greatest things that we're gonna come up with. Getting stats take on an old movie is phenomenal. I can't wait. Um, but then we had the other poll stat about um the Olympics. I and, hate. No, no, you shush. You shush for a second. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for agreeing with me. Thank you for taking my side. I thank you for um, understanding the intriguing nature of life itself. Stat, you're wrong, bro. Listen, 
Like I, like I said, the numbers don't lie. The numbers didn't lie. I won. No, no, that's fine. Yeah. People are stupid. <laughs> I'll, I'll keep going back to that. I want a shirt where that says people are stupid with my my stupid head on it. I couldn't. Some of the people, I, I spoke to a particular person who voted and I go, I cannot believe you voted. And they go, yeah, look, we didn't actually watch the clip to know. That's my bad. If I could take it back, I would. I go, too late. The numbers don't lie. Too late. Listen, man. Had it. They just don't know. They don't know they're on the race. You know, these horses don't know. Shut up, please. <laughs> this is, I don't want to be infuriated like last week. Well, you. well, bro, what was good was last week we also put out a, you know, a call to action, I guess. We wanted to, we told everyone what our next goal is for subscribers. Mm. We wanted to get to 75 by the end of the month. Mate, we got, <laughs> we got eight more people jumping onto the, uh, to the have a chat with Rain stat train. Ladies and gents, thank you so much for coming on board. Was it this month or was it for next month? I thought it was the end of August. Was it? Yeah. Oh, it might have been. Okay. Might have been. And either way, we're up to 60. Ladies and gents, we're nearly there. We need 15 yeah. more of this to jump on. 60, Mate, let's go. I'm loving this, bro. The Have a Chat community is growing. No, who would have they're thought? Getting more, they're getting more vocal. They're, they're getting involved in the conversation. Um, they're what calling us up. They're telling us what they want to hear, what they want to talk about, what they want on the show. And that's exactly what we want, bro. Yeah, mate. That's very good, eh? 60. Hey, oh. mate. It's all about, you know, getting these people involved. And I personally, Stat, cannot wait for this lockdown to end so that when we do come back to the studio, we can have guest after guest after guest, bro. Now, we have a plethora of guests. Bro, I want, all 60, I want all 60 of our subscribers on the show. Wow. Not at one time. Oh, no. I want them at one time. <laughs> I want a party. Like, <laughs> I want a party. Have like a live studio audience going on. <laughs> yeah, just just like pull up chairs like it's uh, like WWE or something. Just having chairs uh, like, and just, like, like cheering for us. Uh, like we're uh, Jimmy Fallon Tonight Show. Oh, yeah, exactly. You just want sitting there in the crowd cheering for us. Woo -woo! Like now I just look around and it's just it's just me. It sucks. <laughs> well, you know what we need. We're, we're gonna need a band then. A band? a band in the corner with uh, you know drum kit, guitars, there's, saxophone. There's, there's only a few artists I'll accept. Okay. It's Simple plan? <laughs> no, not that type of band. No, no, no. I want simple plan. Don't interrupt me. I'll, I'll, part, I'll definitely have Nickel back on, but then I want like the Lebos. Where look for it, Nancy Ajram. Um, okay, but these aren't the type of bands I'm talking about. <laughs> well, you know what? We're gonna have to talk off off um off potty. We're gonna have to talk about this because I want this to happen. Uh, you, you you're taking this joke a little too far. I don't have a studio to put an audience in. Ah, uh, listen. You know what? One can only hope. Uh, one can only hope, bro. But. Mate, dream big, mate. That's what, what we do. Here. Dream big. That's what we do here, bro. We're trying we to dream, crush it. Oh, we, we dream can big. Do that. No, 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 no. We, dream, we dream big. We dream big on have a chat with Ray and Stat. I dream big. We, we do so for sure. We for sure. <laughs> hey, you don't got. you worry. Hey, you guys. <laughs> I swear, <laughs> bro. Why are we doing this? <laughs> it's six weeks in. What are we doing to ourselves? What am I doing to myself, bro? How about um, talk to me five four. Talk to me. Four came out uh, Monday morning. Yep, bro. Yep. What an episode! Yeah, watched it. Big, big fan of this one. It was good. Listen, I, I gotta say, I gotta say, how did you convince him? I don't know. Look, ladies and gents, Peter Mumenjan joined me on Talk to Me, the star of KBB himself, and yes, he actually speaks. It's a big deal, bro. For forty minutes, it was a good conversation, man. And yeah. by the end of it, I just looked at the clock. I go, I could talk to him for another hour. Yeah, it was. And, he's he's good. He's good to chat to. And I think when I'm in studio with him, bro, once we do this again, we're gonna talk for a lot longer than that. Yeah, I reckon for yeah, sure. Yeah. He, he can. It? He holds. He holds up his end of a conversation really, really well. Great conversation. When he's not teasing me, yeah, he's one of the best guys I know. But bro, speaking of conversations, what about the conversation I had today? Yeah, listen. You, you know when you ask why do we do this? Mm. Please. Please tell the, the, the people what happened. Please. This this is crazy, ladies and gents. And big shout out to this bloke. Last night, um, Stat and I were texting, going back and forth, talking about the podcast, whatever. And um, he texts me, he goes, bro, do you know who this guy is? I look it up. I go, nah, man. He goes, he just subscribed to us on YouTube and also uh, followed us on Instagram and all that stuff. I, I looked him up. His name's Good Smoke. Never heard of him. Good Smoke has his own podcast, his own um, little network himself. And he followed us on Instagram and YouTube. I thought, okay, good stuff, whatever. No worries. Like another person joining the community. But then the guy goes and uh, reaches out to us that. 
Yeah. Not, not only does he comment on our videos, but he DMs us. Mm. That was a, I, I, I get this thing. He wants to send a message and I go, okay, cool. Check out the message. Um, to whoever, you know, want to chat to one of you guys just in regards to the podcast and just want to speak about a few things. Now, obviously me being so busy at work, I was just like, you know what? I can't really, oh, I can't really take this call. Yeah, but you know what? Some people are busy, some aren't. Like, yeah. you know, you took the course right away because, you know, you're not that busy. So. Oh, okay, sure. <laughs> yeah. No, nah, but um, I, I took a look at it. I go, yeah, I'll talk to him. Um, then Eddie from Good Smoke gives me a call and, mate, what a bloke, eh? Yeah. Mate, Christian bloke out in the eastern suburbs. Um, and the whole point of his call stat, didn't want anything from us, didn't want, uh, you know, this or that. Just I wanted to let you guys know I love what you guys are doing. It's good to see Christian blokes um, spreading God's word and having a laugh online. What a shub. Bro, what a champion. Lebo? Lebo guy. Lebo guy, yeah, man. What Lebo out in the east. We'll, we'll have him as well with Relic Fude and Fes Karam and Nancy Ajram. And <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll he'll, join, he'll join the clan. Big time, big time. <laughs> nah, shout, shout out to Eddie. Mate, thank you so much for the call today. It really pumped us up. It encouraged us. And it's good to see there's a Christian out there um, trying to do some good. So good smoke, man. Check him out. Um, yeah, subscribe to his channel. I can't wait to check out his stuff. I haven't actually taken a look at a lot of it yet. So, that's yeah, there was own. a guy that I saw. Um, I was actually speaking to a couple of boys today. I told a few of the boys about it. Um, and one of the guys goes, "Yeah, he had he gets up like rising stars on his podcast as well, like guy oh, like Inferno." So. Yeah, so there was a guy that I saw like, mentioned as like Inferno. I'm like, oh, "Okay, cool. I've heard of him, but I hadn't really listened to his stuff." Um, but there was a guy who I saw make a comment on the Roosters Raiders Grand Final 2019. Mm-hmm. And he went absolutely berserk over the calls that happened that game. And okay. he got online and he just started losing it and abusing the referees. And I'll, I'll laugh and I'll go, this guy's hilarious. And then I'll show him on this podcast. I'm like, oh, what the heck? That's hectic. I forgot his name. That's it's not coming to me right now. Yeah. So like, there's a few people that I've seen that he's that's on his podcast. I haven't sat down and taken the time, but no, very keen. No, very keen it was, to check it, it out. Good. It was good to, to have Eddie reach out. Just someone we've got, never met him before. Mm. Never, you know, cross paths, and he thought it was a, uh, it'd be good to reach out to us, and mate, it really helped us out. He gave us a lot of good advice as well on how yeah. to uh, podcast, how to grow the channel, how to keep pushing. Mate, we appreciate it, man. We just wanted to let you know that, so thanks, Eddie. Yeah, cheers, Eddie. Yeah, it was good stuff, man. Good stuff. Mad. What we want? Hey, it's six weeks in, huh? Six weeks in, bro. It's a cracker. When Can't are we be. giving up? Like, when are we putting this to bed? Three weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> but let's be uh, serious bro if there's a time we, we had to stop we can't be stopping now there's nah, nothing to do def- definitely not now bro definitely not for a very long time mate um, I'm, I'm enjoying this too much yeah no you, you're having an absolute blast with this I'm having too much fun bro nah it's good and, I'm enjoying it and I want to have more fun with, with like people in studio have guests on this that that's what I want bro yeah I, I hate this whole like you know when we get people in bro it's going to be sick I'm G yeah. I'm G for yeah. the day G'd up G'd up Gonna be mad. Uh, yeah, G'd up for that for sure. But bro, during this lockdown, I, I look for any reason to get out of the house. Yeah. And thankfully this week I needed to go grocery shopping. Oh yep. Now, when your parents went grocery shopping as a kid stat, do you remember there being a lot of arguments when grocery shopping was going down? Arguments between my parents or arguments between strangers? No, no, arguments between your parents and you, or you've done something wrong and you don't realize it at the time and your parents get upset because they just bought stuff, this, that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So I, yeah. I, got, I had a mad flashback as I was at Coles this week and yeah. I only go to Coles by the way, because it's the closest thing to me. I'm, I'm a Woolworths man myself. Um, only Woolies, mate. Only, uh, only Woolies, bro. I'm a fresh I go on to Woolies. You got to take the extra drive to Woolies. I, I think you're right. I'm a fresh food person, but at heart. Um, anyway, so I go grocery shopping. I'm packing my um, I'm packing my grocery bags at the uh, checkout, right? Doing the personal checkout, whatever. And I have a loaf of bread. I put it at the top of my bag. I carry the bag, but the way I'm carrying the bag, stat, it's sort of squeezing the bread as well because it's so overpacked. And I started telling myself off because I was squishing the bread. And it gave me a flashback to when I was a kid, and Dad used to hand me the bread and say don't squish the bread. And I used to squish the bread all the time as a kid and absolutely ruin it. It gave me a mad flashback, bro. And then it made me realize I am my father's son because I started telling myself off when I got home and I saw the bread 
you know, squashed up. Um, oh, at home. Yeah. Yeah, not oh, in public. Okay. I'm going to tell myself off in public. What do you think I am? <sighs> I wouldn't put it past you on, mate. No, that's that's why I was very concerned. Like, go, surely bro, Ray, you didn't talk to yourself no, there. No, no, surely. I just go, Ray, you're an idiot. You just destroyed this bread. And I just thought back to when my dad used to tell me off for it. It's like, bro. Look, I'll, I'll respect the fact that you, you did it at your house and you didn't do it in public. I'll, I'll take that. But it, it's weird because I never noticed it before. Like the whole, you got to take care of bread or be careful where you place the um the eggs. Yeah, you got to be very that's careful. Something. But there's a... There's a whole uh, there's a whole procedure. Not, I don't know the procedure. I just know that there's a procedure, and don't crush the bread, and don't crush the eggs. Do you go? Do you go grocery shopping? Not a lot. Like I'll go if I don't want to trouble my parents. Yeah, mum takes care of it. Yeah, usually mum takes care of it. Even my dad will do it to an extent. But there were times where I was like, you know what, get me out of the house. I'll go grocery shopping. Hell, I don't care. Um, okay. but yeah, like yeah, I'll do it. Um, it's it's good because by the first time I did it, but I actually got to give you tell the story. First time I did it. Yeah. Mom goes, I need you to get, you know, the huge, get everything you need to get. All right. So I'm going, I'm, I'm just picking them up. And like, you know how, like, that's Lebos, bro. You know, the parents, they sit there and they get the tomato and look at it and they get the chiar and the cucumber and the this and that and the lettuce and the watermelon. What, what, what my teta used to do was when she'd go to the grocery shop, she'd go to the grape section, she'd start eating grapes. I go, Tata, what are you doing? She'd go, no, it's try it before you buy it. <laughs> no, that's not how it works. <laughs> Definitely not how it works. We have our own rules. <laughs> they must have their own rules, especially <laughs> the older ones. Then she would peel an orange. Yeah. And start eating cool. an orange. I thought, what is going on? Like that Superbike episode. But uh, anyway. Yeah, um, anyway. So I was, I'm like, all right. But I'm thinking, man, I'm just getting them, chucking them in. Like People sit there and they want to like look at it, you know, especially the old-fashioned labels, yeah? Yeah. yeah. I can't stuff this. Like, I'm just going to chuck them in, whatever, I'll put it in. Like, I'm not even going to attempt. I'll just put it in, get it done, get it my mum, get the A-OK, and that's it. I'll be done with it. It was one of those ones where I was like, you know what? I'll do it. And then inshallah, she'll never ask me again. Mm. And I'll be sweet. I don't want to do it again. So I go and she goes, oh, by the way, she calls me. She goes, I need to get eggplant. You can get some eggplant. I go, yeah, no drama. So again, looked at one was a bit sketchy. Put it in the bag. One was all right. Chucked it in the bag. Go home. Go home. And I go, here we go. Like, I'm going to cop it. 100%. So okay. we get everything out. I go, ma, this in. Don't go too hard on me. This is the first go. Never know how you go. She goes, from now on, you're grocery shopping for me. Why? I go, and I said, I go, why, why would I do that? She goes, this is very, very good. <laughs> I look at her. Stuff that. I go, damn. And she goes, what's wrong? I, go, I don't want to do this again. She goes, nah, 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 nah. Every week, you got to do this now. <laughs> Thank God that didn't last. You stuffed up, bro. I couldn't believe it. I'm thinking what? the one time, like some of them look sketchy. I'm thinking, how is she improving with this? I can't believe it. What's your one thing that you need in the grocery basket? Like you need to make sure mum gets it every time she goes or you go. Oh. Always tomatoes and cucumbers. Tomatoes, cucumbers. Always, bro. Bro, mine recently has become bacon. Bacon? bacon. Yeah, bro. I love my bacon. Yeah, yeah, love bacon. Oh, uh, but it's, get, it's getting to a point where it's becoming an unhealthy relationship with bacon. Please elaborate. I have, so I have breakfast at 7.30 a.m. Yoga and muesli. That's my first breakfast. Second breakfast <laughs> is around 10 a.m. Yep. Okay. That's eggs, bacon, toast, the full, you know. The works. Work. Yeah, the works. I'm finding myself excited to go to sleep so that I can wake up and eat bacon. Okay. I'm finding my, like... To the point where last week when I was at church before the whole hard lockdown, we yeah. were recording um, you guys singing on stage. Yeah. And I started thinking about bacon as I was flipping slides. Like it, it's getting bad. Like to the point where if I don't have bacon in the house, I will leave the house straight away and go grab bacon. Hmm. So how much bacon do you buy for... And how, how long do you expect it to last you? That's, well, that's my question. Here, here, was the, here was the problem is I like a very specific type of bacon. I like the streaky bacon. <clears throat> my throat's going to... What? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, that's three. And if you didn't get it, make, go skip like 10 seconds before, maybe 15 seconds and you hear it again. <laughs> my throat is gone today. Guys, it's gone every day. What do you mean? Bro, I don't know what's going on with me. Anyway, um... I've counted oh, six, by the way. I've got a little tally. I've counted six. <laughs> You're tying it up. Yeah, yeah. Um, bro, uh, my problem is I like streaky bacon. 
So it's yeah. the strips. Yeah. I don't like the, the big ham styles or the circles or whatever. It needs to be the strips. And okay. for some reason, not every Woolies and Coles carries the strips. Unless you want to go for the high-end stuff and spend an arm and a leg on six strips of bacon. But then today, sorry, not today, the other day when I went grocery shopping, mm. I found a kilo of streaky bacon. Oh, home brand. Yeah. Cause Which, he... listen, you can tell the difference. You can. Of course you can tell the difference. Still, but it's still good. It's dead pork. Looks like then. Thanks, bro. But I'll be definitely, I'll be spending the big dosh to get the, the proper stuff, mate. The problem is I was, I was looking at my grocery receipts and the, the margin between the rest of my items and bacon was ridiculous. Yeah, I think you'll get sick of it in two weeks. Well, this has been going on for three months. Oh, okay. Well, I don't think you're ever getting sick of it. <laughs> Bro, my, my, I'm a very simple man. My breakfast every day is six eggs, four strips of bacon, four pieces of toast. It's pretty good. Yeah. And, <laughs> and I make sure that every time I eat, this is where the weird stuff comes out. The last thing I eat is one strip of bacon. Okay. Well, uh, I like to fault you all the time, but I, I can't fault you there. You got, you got your preference. Thanks, bro. See, this, this is good. This is good. Look, again, being very particular, but this is actually all right. Like, you, you leave the bacon to last? That's not yeah. bad. Problem is, I'm thinking about it too much, so I've got to start rethinking my life. Again, very, very extreme measures are being put in place. Yeah. Oh, listen, how do you have your eggs, but Sunny's dried up, right? Nah, I scramble them. I like, I, like a, I like I like bro it's easier to eat six eggs when it's scrambled six sunny side up is it's a mission it is but that's a, that's a mission but oh oh please bro yeah it is quality phenomenal i'll give you that it's quality but it's phenomenal I, I got to a point where i was trying to eat a dozen dozen eggs yeah per day I got, up, I got up to 10 it's pretty impressive and then I was just like, it's just too much. I, it's it's stupid. So that's when the that's when the bacon came in. Yeah, you can't you can't just have ten shred eggs. Yeah, bro. It, it just and no sauce, nothing. Like I tried to stay. As oh, shred eggs. Tried to stay as healthy as possible with it. Bro, yeah, but it was full on. To be fair, I once have done twelve eggs, one hit. How'd that go for you? Yeah, look. What is that ever again? But not for a very long time. Are you <laughs> not a the missing the world? Hey. Are you a cereal guy? I don't have it enough, bro. But yeah, I love my cereal. Yeah, so I love cereal, but not for breakfast, eh? Yes or no? I love it as a snack. Love it at night. Yeah, sitting yeah. down, watching Netflix. I could do a bowl of Cocoa Pops, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, agreed. Or my my absolute favorite, Fruit Loops. Oh. Look, oh. Not bad. So yeah, I'd, I'd go Crispix. Crispix are good. Cracker, bro. Oh. How about the Cocoa Pops Crispix? Yeah, very good. Oh. Very good. Crispix is my OG. Um, and then I got over... Like, Nutrigrain's good. I got over it. So there was a point where I had it yeah, a lot. That's very easy to get over. I know this, Nutrigrain. Yeah, but you got to... You got to, you know, mix it up. As in, you got to, like, chuck in a bit of Nutella powder on top of it. Nutella powder? <laughs> Nutella. Oh, Nutella. Nesquik. Nutella. Nesquik. Yeah, Nesquik. Nutella, what the hell's wrong with me? You get Nesquik? Listen, bro, I love my sweets. It's my love, you can tell. I love my That's sweets. So I get there. I like to get a little bit, a little bit fancy. Uh, well, I've growing always been growing, growing man. I don't, I don't stop. But I used to get like, I used to get Nesquik and just put it over the top of the Nutrigrain. Next line. Oh. Speaking of Nutrigrain, another data story. <laughs> my, my grandmother mm. used to have her Nutrigrain with boiling water. And I used to look at her and think, Theta, what are you doing? She goes, it's, it's beautiful. It's better than milk. Heck, boiling water. She loved it. That is by far... Disgusting. One of the most disgusting things Correct. I could ever imagine. Correct. I looked at her. I go, what do you... She, she swore by it. She goes, try it. Never try it. Never will. Good choice. Um, you know what's sounds, underrated, though? Sounds deadly. You know what's underrated? Tell me. Is those plus uh, cereals? Oh yeah, like the plus fiber, the plus protein. They're meant to be like the healthy option, but they're not. 
Oh yeah, I've never had them. They're very nice. I've had. Uh, I used to love. I love Just Right. Yeah, yeah, Just Right's good. Too. Banger. Oh, Sultana brand. Oh. Yes, love Sultana brand. Yeah, Sultana. The Milo goat. cereal. Yeah, good. Yeah, you know what else was really good when Milo brought out the um, the chocolate and white chocolate version of it. Yes, yes, that was great. Fantastic. I think it was a couple of months back. Oh man, I better not forget the name because I'm gonna have to do some research on it. Mm-hmm. Um, name me some American cereals. So I'm trying to figure yeah, the one see, I had. Here's the thing, stat: American cereals are rubbish. Yeah, but there's just Captain one or two. Crunch, uh, the one with the marshmallows, uh, the the Lucky Charms. Um, they're all rubbish, bro. They they're all just sugar. And listen, no one's a bigger fan of sugar than me, but like. There's got to be a ratio. You know what I'm saying? I think it was Captain Crunch. I think I went to... I had a, I had singing lessons with Warren mm. on one particular Monday. But a few days before, he goes, listen, you're coming over on Monday. I got, I got some Captain Crunch. He goes, we're going bananas. Is Cap- listen, Captain done. Crunch is all right, but Lucky Charms turned me off American cereals, bro. Why is that? Bro, like after I finished it, I looked at the, the milk and the milk turned blue. There was just that much sugar and rubbish in it. Just I've never had Lucky Charms. It wasn't great. The marshmallows were great, but the charms were rubbish. Yeah, I've ne- look, I've never had Lucky Charms. Mm. Oh, no, it wasn't even Captain Crunch. What was it? Damn. To be honest, I forgot. You're, you're, a, was... quali- you're a quality storyteller, mate. Yeah, bro, I know. I, I can't forget, forget all the things. But it was the best. Mm. Classic American cereal, loved it. Ryan and I went to town. Well, listen, was... we've, spoke- we've spoken about breakfast food for the past 20 minutes. <laughs> Shoot, you, you, went, you went too far with the bacon hey listen man I love bacon Bacon's I was thinking bacon. about it today if I ever owned a pig I would name him bacon terrible name for a pig terrible do you guys think bacon's a good name for a pig we're gonna put up a poll this week <laughs> I ban you for making more polls listen as I told you it's my favourite part of this thing is seeing what people think um, I ban you I wouldn't name it Come on, bro. Bacon's a great name for a pig. Yeah, but no. You don't have to ask why his name's Bacon. No, I want to ask why now. Why? He's Bacon. Let's move on from the breakfast talk, please. Yeah, let's move on from the breakfast talk. Please, bro. I never thought I'd talk that much about breakfast food, but um, something that uh, we've been doing every week and you so graciously named last week is Ray's rant. And Ray has a new rant this week, Stat. Oh, boy. Here we go. On what movie or like another no, article no, you read or another another woke situation that's going on? So I didn't know this was a thing stat, but apparently when people choose when the emojis jump onto your phone, like when you get a new set of emojis on your phone, yeah, there's a full like process for putting these emojis on the phone. They apparently like whoever does it, I don't know who they are, I don't know what company it is, but they get together, they put their list of nominations in. And then they decide at a later date which emojis are going to make it. They've decided that they want to add a pregnant man. Shut your mouth. A pregnant man emoji. Because (sighs) inclusivity and, you know, trans people can be pregnant. That's ridiculous. This is a Bashum stat. This is, good. this is absolutely a big joke. This is probably one of the rants that I'll, I actually like. See I'll, what I'm I'll, saying? Oh, yeah. I did, now, cool. now, listen, people could probably say to me, Ray, it's just an emoji. Who cares? No, this is what's forming our society. Mm. I, a wise man once said, friendship is just sending memes and emojis. And he was 100% right. Because now what they're trying to do is they're trying to get in with the teenagers. They're trying to get in with the kids that are using these phones, messaging each other emojis, love and life. And, oh, there's a pregnant man. Let's just put it into the psyche so that when they get older, they think it's normal. I'm sorry. It's not. I'm sorry. God had a very, very specific order for things. And science and life, women are the only ones that can get pregnant. And stat, to be completely straight out with you, thank God for that because I don't think I could do pregnancy. Everything was good until you said that. I'm not gonna. I don't want. You want to do pregnancy? Uh, no, but I right. won't. Say, That's I what I'm saying. I don't want to handle pregnancy. <laughs> just be stupid. I, I don't want to get pregnant. Why are these people putting pregnant people onto uh, pregnant men 
onto our emoji keyboard champ. Because this people is are stupid. This is absurd. Does. This is absolutely ridiculous. It's disgusting. So they're going to take a vote on September 24th or something like that to decide whether or not um, this is going to be added to our keyboards. Are they going to be doing a poll? No, 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 no. They decide amongst themselves. By the way, what do you have to do in life to get a job where all you do every single day is create emojis for phones? It's a pretty sick job. And how difficult could your job be if you need to vote on what emojis go where? Yeah, it's true. No, it's I, don't, I, don't, I don't imagine it being a ridiculously hard process. Yeah, neither did I. And um, a couple of the other things that were getting added on or part of the nom nomination list are a, a slide, like a playground slide, um, a person wearing a crown, um, you know, a couple of other things. But the one that got me and the one that actually frustrated me a little bit because why has this not been added sooner is a crutch. You know, like crutches? Yeah, yeah. One singular crutch. That was this two years ago. I could have used that every other day. Yeah, you know what? Very good it didn't happen that way. But what? Do they even have a pair of crutches on? I don't. I don't know. You don't have to sit there and go through every one of your no, emojis no, I'm now. Gonna, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to check. It's a very good point. Because but, uh, I'll I tell you, if I knew there was a crutches emoji, I'd be using it all the time. <laughs> yeah, actually you would. Because, you know, I get and, injured a fair bit. But you also would be using just the emoji. What's your favorite emoji? My favorite emoji? Mm. The Pinocchio one. That's a great emoji. I really do like that one. I'm going to check through my favorite emojis. Well, the ones that yeah, I frequently see, there's use. No, there's no crutches stat. Um, which one's good? Nah, you know what's, what's become a very good one of, of recent? Mm. The handshake one. The handshake one's good. That is one of the best ones. Because I've seen them related to like a couple of memes. Cracker. I really like the thinking face. Yeah, thinking face is good. That's a great emoji. Thinking face is good. The 100 emoji is hectic. Yeah, that's a great one. I like the head explosion. Yeah, yeah. I, my, I, my, most, like first. my most my most used one for sure is the laughing crying face. I, you know, I never use that one and I refuse to use any laughing cry emojis. You know, I use that one so much and I thought about it yesterday when you sent me a, uh, uh, I was about to say Vine. Wow. Oh, wow. When you sent me a TikTok, mm. did not laugh a little bit, did not think, I thought it was hilarious, but I remember looking at my phone just like that. I spent like seven laughing, crying emojis to you. See, and I thought, wow, this is where society has come to. We don't laugh out loud, but we do it on our phone. So, you know, so as everyone likes to know, I love my WhatsApp and I love any conversation. So if I see a comment and I write a lot of ha ha ha's, I'm peeing myself laughing. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I don't go like, oh, ha ha. Nah, nah. I, I'm dead ski. I love it. Yeah. I, I try I to laugh. Like I full laugh and I, I give the appropriate amount of ha ha's. Yeah. Um, and the one, the actually one of my favorite ones of recent is the, the skeleton one. Just the one that's That one's dead. good. Yeah, dead. Yeah. Phenomenal. So I use uh, that if, too if regularly. I'm, if I'm going ha ha ha, I've got an appropriate amount. Like that's how much I ha ha'd. Or if I put a ba ha ha, forget it. I'm gone skis. I'm, I'm crying on the floor. Yeah, no, nah, I don't like the ba ha ha. Nah, that, that one's a big one for me. Like I don't use it often, but when I do, you know you got me. I, I, just, I just like the ha ha ha's. Yeah, that's oh, yeah. If I've put like a dead emoji, I would I was weeping at the comment. But I didn't do it like I like with a straight face. Mm. I'm dead ski. Can I tell you this is a very stimulating conversation? Why? I'm just saying, you know, breakfast food, emojis. So guys, listen, straight out, enough with this pregnant emoji rubbish. Pregnant women, put 20 of them on there. Love it. Keep Pretty women easy. away from it. It's not something we can do. It's not something that we want to be able to do. And um Pull your yeah. heads in. Sorry? Pull your heads in. Dead set, bro. Mm. Like, come on. What, what are we doing as a society? Do we just need to, just to, like, just, I, I just don't know. When you allow it to be so accepted in a regular day-to-day -day thing, things like it popping up in emojis is really not too much of a surprise. No, but it's it's bad because that's where it starts. You know what I'm saying? Well, that's, of course. How, that's how they get it in your heads. They get it in, your, they get it in the kids' heads by putting it in movies, TV shows, emojis, games, all this tahanek. Bro, it's so bad. Yeah, bro. And you know what? I actually, 
I think someone was showing me the Disney Plus account. Mm. And I think I was going through like the list because there's so many, like so many mm. different things to watch on there. And then there was one that you just said pride. Yeah. And I said, what a what a like that every, is so every sad. Every single every single um every single streaming service is so sad, bro. Like I just look in like you know for Disney Plus, like things doing very more for kids than that. You just no, it's pathetic, bro. That that's that's yeah, it's garbage. That, that's why we need to be doing what we do, bro. Mm, we, need to be teaching, we need to be teaching our kids properly. Parents need to be doing their jobs. Churches yeah. need to be doing their jobs. Podcasts like this need to exist so that we can give an alternative. You know mm. what I mean, agreed. 100%. 100%. Pathetic. But yeah, that's, you know what? That's one of your best Ray Rants. Thank you, Stat. It's yeah. Another very great, good. It's another great episode of Ray's Rant. Very good. Very, very good. But look, moving on to always bigger and better things mm. because that's what we always love to do. You got to give me a review on a movie that I'm absolutely refusing to watch amongst all the many other movies. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, interesting this one Space Jam 2 got a chance to watch it the other day Space Jam 2 A New Legacy is what it's called did you watch it? yes I did got a chance to view it as a human being I would never watch a second of it and listen I understood that I did not disagree with you there but I love the Looney Tunes that much I I listen Looney Tunes when someone dies in my family or I'm in a very bad mental state and I need to laugh. The first thing I go to for a laugh is Daffy Duck. Mm. If you take a look at my YouTube watch history, it's a lot of just Daffy Duck compilations. Right? Space Jam and Looney Tunes Back in Action were two of my favorite movies growing up. And, And so whether or not I like LeBron James, I wanted to watch it. Okay, so uh, Space Jam Two, bro. It's not a direct sequel. It does um, it does talk about number one. So Space Jam Two is about LeBron James and his son. His son wants to be a uh, a game designer. LeBron wants him to be a basketball player. So there's your story. There's your conflict. Um, LeBron's son gets angry and storms off in the middle of the Warner Brothers lot, and ends up getting sucked up by an uh, artificial intelligence computer. LeBron follows after him and turns out this AI computer wants to have a basketball game with LeBron James. Winner takes all. If LeBron James wins, he gets his son back. He gets out of the computer system. If the computer system wins, they're stuck in there forever. That's your plot. That's your story. Okay. I couldn't get through you talking about it for 30 seconds. Correct. Very dumb storyline. But pretty cliche if you think about it there's a problem they've got to fix it get the looney tunes involved lebron doesn't want to use the looney tunes he wants to use superman he wants to use all these other wb properties fair enough i'd do the same thing if this is you know i've got to win this this basketball game it's like that but he ends up getting forced to use the looney tunes because bugs bunny wants to get his team back together and they want to try something for a looney tunes movie stat the Looney Tunes were barely in it. And that frustrated me. That's crap. For a Looney Tunes movie, they were the sideline characters to LeBron James and to every other Warner Brothers property under the sun. What it felt like was a massive advertisement for HBO Max, uh, Warner Brothers streaming service. Okay. And it wasn't done well. Like you'd see characters from other movies and other TV shows in the background, like of the basketball game. And it was just random people dressed up in costumes. It wasn't the actors. They didn't even CGI them in or anything like that. They were just random people dressed up as the characters. It was like a very bad Halloween party. How long did it go for? Uh, Bro, two hours. Two hours? Bro. And listen... the whole time I'm thinking to myself, just get the Looney Tunes on the screen, get the Looney Tunes on, then I'll laugh, then I'll have a good time. Anytime the Looney Tunes were on the screen, it was like they were forced on, like they weren't really naturally put onto the screen. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Like they, they were doing things that were out of character for them. It just wasn't good. It wasn't funny. The one joke that hit, the one joke that made me actually um, laugh out loud, like full on, I actually paused it and rewind it because it was that funny. Um, and this is going to be a little bit of a spoiler, guys. So if you are really keen on seeing the movie, just skip this part now. 
they looked for MJ. So they yeah. looked for Michael Jordan. <laughs> and Sylvester goes to the team at halftime. They're all in, they're in the, um, the locker room. They're losing. They're very upset. And he goes, I found Michael Jordan. I found Michael Jordan. And the music comes on. MJ's music comes on. He comes, starts walking down the hallway. It's all black silhouette. Everyone's getting pumped. Everyone's excited. And it ends up being Michael B. Jordan, the actor. <laughs> and I was finished because Daffy's response to that, his jaw drops to the floor. All the Looney Tunes just start going off. It was hilarious. And they have a good back and forth with uh, Michael B. Jordan. He's like, you know, I'm not really the guy, blah, blah. It was very funny. Oh, yeah. Um, so that was the only good joke in the whole movie. So the, so give me a bit of background. The first Space Jam, which I've seen in Phenomenal, mm. nothing would ever beat it. Mm. How long did that go for? Hour 30-ish. Right. Two hours for that. No, Especially so if you're not it, adding all the Looney Tunes in, like you're not using them properly. Yeah, that's crap. Yeah, and like they weren't even playing basketball. So because the kid wants to be a game designer, they were playing his game like that he's designing. So you didn't really know who's winning, how many points meant what like it was just weird bro it wasn't it wasn't good it wasn't good at all i was very upset because i was really looking forward to this movie even though i don't like lebron um just i'm not a fan of him as an athlete um yeah just wasn't a fan bro won't yeah. be watching that again like i don't see myself watching that again at all yeah no, I, I i can't watch it eh? i can't as, as tempting as it's been and as it is to like look at you know like seeing all the Newtons in that, that was, that was very tempting for me. But what well, can uh, I tell I just, you? Can I tell I'm you? Big that, LeBron's antics as of recent. Can I tell you that was the reason I wanted to watch it because I knew I was going to get like I, I just it was it was so tempting to watch, mm. and I knew that I just wanted to watch it. So I was like, let's let's do it. Let's watch some Looney Tunes. I can tell you as a massive massive Looney Tunes fan, you can miss this one. Like, there's nothing in this where I'd say yeah, it was worth watching. I was so upset. Hey, that's very disappointing. I was so upset. And again, another another sequel that didn't need to be made. No, listen, I think it did. I think it's about time we had another Looney Tunes movie, for sure. But let's make you're a Looney saying, Tunes. Let's yeah, but you're saying there's no Looney Tunes. But that's what I'm saying. Let's make a Looney Tunes movie with the Looney Tunes in it. You know what I'm saying? Don't, make them, get... the, don't make them the sideline character. Make them the focus. Like in Space Jam 1, they were the ones that went and grabbed Michael Jordan. They needed his help. Mm. You know? In this one, it was LeBron being like, nah, I don't want to use the Looney Tunes. His literal game plan, like that, they did a whole focus on the game plan. His game plan was do not be Looney. So for the first half of the game, they did nothing Looney. That's so stupid. It, it bro, it, it burnt me because it did show what LeBron was like as a player. I'll say that he's arguing with the ref. He's telling his teammates off, all that sort of stuff. So I was like, ah, they got that, they got that right at least. And this is coming from a Lakers fan. Yeah, I'm glad I'm not going into any of that. Yeah, Space Jam Two, massive disappointment, guys. Have you seen that? Let us know in the comments what you thought of it. If you've watched the movie, maybe I'll, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you're like Ray, you just don't get it. You didn't understand it. Maybe I'm too old for it now. I'm not too sure. Let me know what you think. Let me know if your kids liked it. Maybe kids are loving it. Not too sure. Yeah, poor kids probably don't know any better. Yeah, bro. But let's go down your neck of the woods for a second. Talk to me. NRL news. This is yeah, big for us. Phil Gould. Joining the Bulldogs. Oh, Why don't you tell us this story, brother? Oh, boy. Listen, just going to get my tissues here. I might cry. Okay, no worries. Got him. Got him. Talk to me. Listen, let me just say, a couple of weeks ago, we lost 66-0 and I cried for 10 minutes. So the tears that I was crying the other night were a lot better tears, let me tell you. Yeah. So a bit of background. For those that don't know, Phil Gould is one of the most respected figures in rugby league in terms of uh, his administrative um, skills, in terms of his football knowledge, in terms of him as a player, as a coach. Um, He played for us and then coached us to a grand final back in the um, the 80s and then moved on. He worked with New South Wales, um, coached. He was behind Phil, sorry, he's ahead of Phil at the moment um, as the most successful New South Wales origin coach. Um, and he's just phenomenal in, in every aspect when it comes to the logistics side of things of rugby league. Um, you know, he's rebuilt the Panthers to where they are today, even though they sacked him a few years back. Hmm. You know, he's he's very big on junior development. Anyway, he's a, he's phenomenal. He's always had a tie with the Bulldogs from working for them uh, about 30 odd years ago. So he's 
Carol Wall was at the Warriors, mm-hmm. where he was doing the kind of the same thing and implementing the same process as he was at the Panthers, and building them up from the ground up, and just making them having them like an academy, junior academy, so that they can breed a lot of their talent from there and keep them in rugby league, because rugby union is very strong also in New Zealand. So Phil Gordon was in charge of that. He had signed on for a couple of years to do that and to get the ball rolling. Things were looking good. Things were going well. We approached Phil Gould back in Magic Round. Um, and we just thought we'd give like reach out. You know, John Curry, our CEO, wanted to reach out and see if he'd be available to work with us, which would mean he would need to break his contract at the Warriors. Now, at the time, he declined. And he goes, look, as much as I love the opportunity, at the moment, I'm focused on the Warriors, kind of focused on my role there, and I'm not going to duck out early. Fair enough. So we left it at that. And... What had happened was when everything was kind of back to normal, we had that bubble where we could travel to New Zealand and New Zealand could come to Australia. Phil Good went to New Zealand and started putting in things in program and in, in process to have the academy start up, you know, with Stacey Jones there, Tony Iro, Adam Blair, to get really things moving forward to start, you know, the groundwork. Yeah, nice. So when we had put in an offer, he had rejected it because he was still working with the Warriors. Then they've closed up the bubble. Now we're in this lockdown again, which kind of made Gould think that if I'm going to be part of a role where I need to be hands-on on the club, I can't be doing it for a club like the Warriors. It's just, it's not their fault. It's just the you current state we're in. I can't do it. I can't commit to being New Zealand every week if I can't travel. If I have to quarantine two weeks there and then come back quarantine two weeks, it's going to affect my you know duties as a commentator, as an analyst, as everything. And it's too much time in lockdown. So there's no way for him to kind of work around that. So we then approached him again and said, look, we know how things are. You know, if you, we're giving you a role in Australia, you know, in Sydney, from the comfort of your own home, you don't, there's no need for you to travel. We want you to consider coming to work for us and, and making us as good as what the Panthers are now through the junior development programs and a team for the women and everything. Took a bit of time. He went back and forth with uh, the Warriors and the Warriors said to him, look, you know, we don't obviously want to lose you, but we have no choice at the end of the day because ideally it's not going to work out. So they were aware. Like they knew they had an approach from the Bulldogs and Phil Gould knew that. He goes, like, I want to go back to my club and eventually help him in some capacity. How how um, how long was his contract with the Warriors? It was a couple of years. Okay. Um, and there wasn't really like a time frame on it, but it would have been like a, it would have been like a three to five year kind of contingency plan that they would have had at Panthers. Uh, just to kind of get the ball rolling and then have so everything they were, happy, they were happy to release him? Not initially. And then when he came to realizing, they go, look, man, well, it is what it is. Mm. Before it got to that part of the conversation, the Bulldogs came in with an offer and said, we are happy for you to continue to work with developing a, an academy, a junior academy for the Warriors, but you're employed by us. Oh, wow. Yeah, so that wasn't part of the first arrangement, but as part of the second arrangement, you can still help in being part of their junior academy. If they call you and want your assistance, help them. Do what you can. Let's build the game. Because it's now, it's not just about the club. It's about building the game in New Zealand. Yeah, 100%. So the club were like, we're not going to go against it. We love that idea. You can do that, but we want you to focus on our club. You know, Makes it's pretty clear that. Supporter there. That's great. Yeah, so he goes, all right. He, um, he's, Wayne Beavis, his manager, got in contact. You know, signed the contract the night before. He informed the Warriors. He goes, look, I'm going to do this. And they go, yep, no problem. He goes, I'm still inclined to help you guys with your junior academy. If you guys want a phone call, I'm always going to help you out. Don't think I'm just going to leave you out high to dry and dog is. Mm-hmm. Um, had the appropriate conversations. Signed that th- signed Thursday night at about 11 p.m. and confirmed to everyone at 10 p.m. that he's joining the Bulldogs as a general manager of football. So very exciting news. One that we needed as a club to really move forward. So we have the All Blacks legend, Steve Hansen, who's been doing... A lot of work with Trent Barrett and the coaching staff um, and even having a bit to do with the players. But now Phil will come in and restructure our whole organization. Yeah, nice. It was about seven or eight years ago, man. Like, I'm sure you remember where we were not only topping the NRL, but we're topping New South Wales Cup. Mm-hmm. So I had a cup. How mad. So we, were, we were gunning. Where were Panthers are now, we were. In a big fall. Massive fall. So he's going to come in. He's going to have a say in who we sign. He's going to have a say in who we bring into the club in terms of on-field, off-field. He's going to make a lot of tough decisions. So just want to warn all fans out there, especially for Dogs fans, there's going to be a lot of decisions we're not going to agree with. That's going to be the best for the club that we're just going to have to stick with. Um, by the end of this week, we're going to be announcing that Tavita Pangai Jr. and Paul Vaughan are signing on. To add to the caliber of players we have in Matt Burden coming in, Josh Adokar, Brent Naden, Matt Dufty, you, things are looking up in the up for us. I'm a fan. 
I, I think he is probably the smartest NRL man there is. Mm. I think he's probably the one of the biggest brains in the game at the moment. And uh, I'm a fan. I, I yeah. think he he's the guy that can bring us back to a to a contending club. For us, it's bringing someone, one of our own, back to, back to us. You know, we've seen him have his yeah. success at different clubs and to bring him back home to be part of a massive overhaul and what we're trying to do, man, but, I'm see, so for it. The biggest thing for me is he understands what the Bulldogs culture is or mm. what it should be. And I'm excited for him to bring that back. I'm excited to him, for him to work with Steve Hansen. You know, two yeah. brilliant minds in their fields coming together. Um, it's great, you know, and I think it's awesome for where we're going to be heading as a club. Mate, we've got some signings we've made for next year. We're starting to look a little bit better. We're still a little bit off in a couple of positions, but hopefully this is the end of the hell we've been through in the last five years. So, mate, a phenomenal acquisition by the club. Um, great, you know, kind of puts us back into hoping and dreaming of good times again. Um, you know, me going around to the streets of Belmore and partying. So that's what I'm looking forward to the most, you know, uh, the glory days. Looking forward to that again, bro. Looking forward to that again. Yeah, so big news when in dog's land. Um, absolutely wrapped. More news to come out at the end of the week. So stay tuned with that. Um, I'm breaking to you now. TPJ and Paul Vaughan will be signing to the club by the end of the week. Not a fan of Paul Vaughan joining the club, but let's leave that at that. Yeah, no, I like it. I've come around. I, I'm, I know we're trying to build a culture, but I know that we feel good at the helm. And I know that with Steve Hansen, a part of it as well, there's less chance of them slipping up. And I know that if they do slip up, there's just going to be a massive crackdown on it. I just see it. Like, I'm just, I love Phil Gould, but what a humble. Uh, what a great guy. Khalili. Thanks, Phil. Love you, Philip. Looking forward to it, Stat. Looking forward to it. It's good. It's good. I'm so excited. All right, mate. Well, it's that time of the show again. Mm. First of the it week. Is. First of the week. Uh, yeah, let's get right into that. You've got it. I do. So... Um, for those that are tuning in and want to turn their Bibles, uh, we're doing a passage in Philippians. So at the moment, we're kind of doing discipleship. Uh, Goose and I are doing discipleship with a couple, and you yourself as well, uh, with a couple, uh, George and Geraldine, who are big fans of our show. So, hey, guys. Hi, George. Shout out there. Hey, Geraldine. Um, now, we went through a passage last week um, in regards to, um, like, you know, who is Jesus and, and, and basically what, you know, what he's done for us. Um, and we came across a passage in Philippians chapter two. Um, I'm just trying to find the, I think it's verse five, um, five to eight. And I want to talk on verse 10 and 11. So I'll, I'll go on to start reading that now. So Philippians chapter two, verse five, uh, let this mind be in you, which is, which is also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon himself the form of a servant. It was made in the likeness of men. And uh, being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Um, and then verse yeah, 9 to 11 says also, Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, that every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. That for me is like, I love this, I love this passage. Um, first putting us in the mind frame um, that the mind, you know, as we read this passage, was also put into Christ. Um, and then being found in fashion as a man that he, you know, Christ would, you know, send like sacrifice himself to die for us. And throughout his whole life, you see the obedience of Christ, you know, through everything he did. It was just complete 100% obedience. And then I love how it says here, um, and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself. And became obedient throughout his whole life. Well, not just through his whole life. He became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. That, that's, that verse gives me chills. I don't know about you. I love that verse. And then, he, and then it talks about how where it says, you know, that at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow. Well, things in heaven and things in earth, everything under the earth, and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. You know, there are so many people in there that mock, and there are so many people there that have their opinion. Mm. Um, and use Christ as a swear word and you know they go about that and they have this hatred for God and all that and obviously it's heartbreaking and, and it kills you know to look at it and, and to see it in that, in that aspect but at the end of the day you know when you look at that passage when he says you know every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord that just gives me the chills man that's just so powerful and we talk and then like I touched on earlier you see Christ's obedience through the death on the cross that for me, that was my that was my verse of the week. I know it's about sixteen verses there, but yeah, I can't seem to just know one verse. I like to get carried away. The one thing I take from this man is, 
is especially verses 10 and 11 that it's a very um it's like skipping to the end of the book mm. it's showing us hey excuse me at the end of the day he's winning mm. at the end of the day no matter what your thought process is no matter what you believe no matter what you're um you think is going to happen yeah whether you hate god or you love god one day you're going to bow down one day you're going to be calling him lord mm. you know there's a lot of hatred for god today there's a lot of hatred for jesus christ but one day that hatred is going to be swallowed up and people are going to be regretting the words they've said mm. because they're going to get down on their knees and say lord you're 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 legit mm. And it's our job as Christians to make sure that as many people as possible, especially in our lives, are not falling victim to being yeah. on the wrong side of this. Mm. You know, we need to, and we say it every single week. We need to be doing our job. We need to be telling people about Christ. We need to be telling people the gospel. And the fact that he humbled himself, he, he made himself of no reputation, took the form of a servant. Mm and died for you and me that's a, i don't know how you read that and you don't get chills i don't know how you read that and you don't think wow what a savior yeah you know what i'm saying yeah it, we, we can never we'll never be able to just sit there and just comprehend and take it all in the really the sacrifice until we get to heaven a hundred percent and it's so important that if you read this as a christian that you read that and you think to yourself wow and that should get you psyched up that should get you pumped that should get you excited to know that you're on the winning side of this thing that um at the end of the day you're going to be up in heaven with him glorifying his name and that he did this for you and if you're not a christian if you're not saved you should take a look at this and think hey is he legit because mm. he's not trying to damn you here he's trying to show you hey i'm real yeah and i want you to make a decision before it's too late yeah and that's you know what's amazing yeah you know he's a lot of people aren't seeing it, but he's making himself more real by the day. Yeah. You can see him everywhere. You know, it, by the day, you just know, you see it. And it's that burning, that, that drive that we need to tell everyone. Mm. You know, I've, I, was, I was given an analogy once where, it's a bit of a weird one, um, where I was told, you know, like a kind of picture people I've ever encountered with through you know, my whole life. And the many ample opportunities I've had tell people about christ and i have it mm. um and i was given an energy of, of picture it like this as you're entering into heaven you're going up through like an escalator you're going up into heaven and the people that are coming down that are headed to hell are people that you never got the opportunity to preach to because you were too selfish to or you were too stubborn to or you were too scared to and you and you picture that they picture them coming down and they were just saying you didn't tell me about you didn't tell me about heaven you didn't tell yeah, me about well. christ you didn't tell me that I could be with you heading up yeah, into well. heaven, into that glory, instead of going into hell where I'm going to be forever. You know, and I, I think about that all the time. Mm. And that scares me, bro. Like, that's why I, I want to do everything I can and, and not miss any opportunity. Mm. Well, see, that's the thing, bro. I mean, I've had four episodes of Talk To Me so far where I learn about people in their respective fields, their respective businesses, their respective industries. But the end game of all of those talks have been our job as christians is yeah to do well in our workplaces but to make sure we're glorifying god and spreading the gospel mm. and there's nothing more important for us to do while we're on this earth but to spread the gospel man yeah push it out get it out there yeah 100 percent, bro and and when you when you like revert to the passage as well um you know i love i love where it says here where um it says who being in the form of God thought or not robbery to be equal with God. Yeah. You know, and that's that's for me. I'll like, just read it again. I'm just He was God, bro. He yeah. is God. That's an that's an amazing Powerful. part. So uh, as we were going through that discipleship last week, it, they just really put my mind at ease, eh? Yeah, like it, yeah. it, it gave me a lot of like, you know, it gave me a lot of chills, but it also put my mind at ease, you know, that he humbled himself. And died for us. You know, I feel like it's been the common pattern since we've started talking, you know, since we've started this podcast where we keep yeah. talking about salvation and, and Christ's love, but it's it's so key and it's so important. Yeah. That you know. And like you just said, bro, it gave you so much peace to read that. And that's beautiful to hear because just like we started this podcast with the um conversation about mental health and being okay, you can find so much peace in reading God's word. Mm. You know, these are some trying times, man. They're not normal, they're not. Yeah. They're not 
what you'd expect as a person to go through. They're not, um, they're unprecedented. You know what I mean? You don't know what's coming. Yeah. It's so easy to feel lost in all of this and scared, but you can find so much peace in reading God's word. Yeah. That's why it's so important in time now, now in this time more than ever to catch up on that Bible reading, to, to be in prayer, to yeah, fast. And, to... and I'd say this is probably the hardest time in regards to that. As well. So hard. Because you're so comfortable. It's so easy to be lazy during this time. Mm. Pick it up, read it. Now, I'm talking yeah. to myself there, bro. Of course, yeah. Pick and, it up, read and, it. And as well, bro, like you got to remember, you know, with the we have actually so much time now, mm. but there are still so many days where you just think, man, yeah, I don't want to read the Bible today. Or, yeah, man. Or we, we've, we've put so many things in front of God. We're just like, ah, you know, you can wait till tomorrow kind of thing. This is the guy that, you know, this is Christ who died for us. And we're with, you know, we treat it like that. It's, it's, yeah. especially in a time like this where we have so much time, it's, it's very convicting, bro. And so like I said, I'll speak to myself do. in that. Yeah, it's so important we do, bro. Mm. Um, but yeah, that was that was my verse of the week, my verses of the week, considering I can't focus on one. Your chapter of the week. Yeah, mate. It's going to be a book. Uh, mate, you might as well have read the whole Bible, bro. Hey, listen, that would be, 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 be a good podcast, wouldn't it? <laughs> the new nah, idea. That was good, bro. That was good. Yeah, so why not? That's it, mate. That's it. Do you have a big week ahead of you? Yeah, I do. I do. Um, I had a lot going on last week, which is why I couldn't drop last week's podcast. So I've got to drop that one and then drop a new one uh, for Wednesday. So hopefully that all ties in mm. appropriately. Nice. Um, so yeah, I know a lot of people are asking me why I hadn't dropped the podcast. I had a lot going on. Um, a lot of things I had to handle and kind of deal with. So there was a bit of a delay in doing that, but I'll get them out this week. Um, but yeah, look, looking forward to another great podcast this week on League Chat with the Stat, which is going to be Cracker. Um, and yeah, that's Tomorrow yeah. Morning. Apart from that, bro, just yeah, just just gonna work and and um and just chill out, bro. I guess and just uh, nice, man. Watch more sport. As you know, well, the in- it looks like you're getting a uh, head start on watching that sport champ. Yeah, I know, bro. <laughs> it looks like I'm just trying to get straight into it. <laughs> my bad. Nah, it's a good week for content stat. I'll tell you this. Uh, Monday we had talk to me with Peter Woman Jam. Great episode. Tuesday we have this. Have a chat with Ryan Stat. Wednesday is um league chat with the stat. Yeah. Then. On um, Sunday, we have Faith Baptist Church live streaming both services. Yep. Been a huge blessing, those services. Guys, check those out. They are great. And uh, Topic on music. Sun- Sorry? Topic on music. Music. We're talking about music a lot, which has been mm-hmm. really good, really convicting. And yeah. um, we also have another KBB episode coming out this week, mate. Oh, yeah. Yeah, bro. 10 a.m. Sunday morning. Guys, check all those out. Um, it's going to be great. Do us a favor, guys. If you're listening to this right now, I want you to do me a favor. If you're subscribed to our channel, thank you so much for subscribing. We appreciate it. If you're not subscribed, and we know there's a lot of you out there who aren't because we see the numbers of people who are watching and everything like that. Guys, please do us a favor. Just hit that subscribe button. Even if you don't want to watch our videos, just hit the subscribe button. Maybe there's a video that comes out one day that uh, tickles your fancy. It helps us out so much. It really, really does. You, it, more than you'd probably realize. Mm-hmm. Um, subscribe to us on YouTube. Follow us on Instagram and Facebook. We're trying to start something here. We're trying to do something different. Um, we're trying to get more Christian content out there. And we want you involved in that. We want you commenting. We want you sharing it. We want you getting involved because the more you're involved, um, the better this show is. You know what I mean? So I think this show is so much better when people are commenting telling us what they think so that we can talk about that on air, get them on the show and see what they're saying. I wanted to jump on as well. Yeah, definitely. 100%. Help us guys. We are so close. But our next goal is 75 subscribers. We're at 60 right now. And we know you guys can get us to 75. Join the Have a Chat community. Um, and it's going to be, it's a fun ride, man. We're having a fun ride doing this thing. Yeah, it's good. It's good. And I'll, I'll end on on the last thing that I opened up with uh, in, this, in this episode. Remember that, you know, if you want someone to talk to, I'm available. If there's any support, I can help out even financially. Please reach out. Um, we're, as I said, we're a community. What we're trying to build is trying to build something good, and we want to help out as best we can, especially in times like these. So just remember that you know you can always for those that have my number, you can give me a call or reach me on social media on my Facebook, Instagram under Nathaniel Manor. Um, and if you guys want to just take your mind off things, yeah, tune in, subscribe to what we're doing here. Um, and yeah, just remember that I'm a phone call away. I'm, I'm a Facebook, Instagram message away if you guys need anything. 100%. And same goes for me. You can find me at Ray Haddad 97 on Instagram, Facebook. Guys, make sure you're talking. Make sure you're um, talking to each other, talking with us. That's 
I'm Ray. That's that. Thanks Don't for having me. Don't stop that one up. Uh, stop that up. Let's try that yeah. one more time. You want to give it a shot? You give it a shot. Go. Yeah, what? I started it or ended, bro? Okay, Guys, go for it. That's Ray. Start over here. Enjoy. Take it easy and enjoy the episode. Thanks for having the chat. Start out.